Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge, and I would like to talk to you a little bit about some fullering dyes. But before we can talk about fullering dyes, we need to talk about what fullering is. <clears throat> fullering, any forging process, creating a sharp transition in, cro in a cross-dimensional area. That's, that's what I found. Basically what it is, is you're hitting the material from two sides and like necking it down. That's the... That's what we're talking about. That's the type of fullering that we're talking about. So, how do you do this? Now, you can do some large fullering using the horn of the anvil and your hammer. Now, if you want to do a tight fuller, which is what most people think of when they think of fullering, traditionally, you would use a bottom fuller and a top fuller. The bottom fuller goes in the hardy hole on the anvil, and then someone holds the top fuller in line with it, and then you hit the top fuller with your hammer with the, material, with the material between it. Now, the problem with this is you gotta have two people, cause somebody's gotta hold the material, somebody's gotta swing the hammer, and somebody's gotta hold the top fuller. So that requires two people. So there's some other ways to do this. Now what I normally use is a chop fuller and this is a one person way to fuller. Now I made this oh well over a decade ago and I didn't even weld it. I had uh, somebody else. My welds looked worse at the time. But uh, how this works is uh, I've, I've got it through the, the hardy there and Throw the material in when the material's hot, hit the top, and go. I made this out of a uh, uh, semi-truck leaf spring, and every once in a while I have to grind the mushrooming off. I made it where I could adjust it so I could do different depth fullers. But this always works great. It's a good one-person thing, but it does require a lot of material to uh, make one. So. Are there other options? Another option would be a guillotine tool. And we will make a couple of guillotine tools in a later video, but a guillotine tool, you're not simplifying things from a, a chop fuller. You can buy them, they're not the cheapest thing in the world, you can make them, but like I said, it's actually a little more complicated than a chop fuller, so you're not really simplifying things. If you want to get the simplest way for a one-person shop, to fuller material, you're probably gonna wanna go with a spring fuller. And you can put, you can make a spring fuller in a couple of different ways depending on what you want to achieve. So, let's make some spring fullers for the little anvils. Now something to bear in mind when you're looking at these fullers. Uh, the reason why I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use this fuller a lot more than this fuller is the, the basic type of the work I do. 90% um, of the time when I'm using a fuller, I'm, I'm, I'm isolating material in a door pull. Um, the other times that I use a fuller, I'm, I'm making a candle cup using pipe. So this is easier, just, just the way it lays on the anvil for me to do the kind of work that I'm doing. With, uh, with a fuller like this, which is more for fullering a, a long groove down a piece of material. Uh, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's the way I envision this being used. Um, if you're putting material in lengthwise, you're gonna run out of room real quick. So figure out which kind of fuller that you want, and you can make them, of course, different size materials, different diameter rounds, and it just depending on the type of work that you want to do. Of course, you can make all of them and have them hanging up there so they're ready when you need them. And of course, if you need a tool for a job, certainly make a tool for that job. Starting material is pretty simple stuff. I've got uh, some three quarter square stock to be the shanks that go down in the anvils. I've got some uh, three quarter round stock this is coming from a bolt. This is just mild steel. A uh, piece of 5 8 round stock. And some quarter by one flat stock. I don't think it's going to be enough. I got some more over there. Start by sectioning this off and 
three inch sections. Five-eighths, I'm going to do in two-inch sections. Only need two of those. I don't know what I'm going to need of the one-inch yet. All my pieces are cut. I have center punched the center of the material I'm using for the springs here. I'm trying a couple of different sizes, but I'm center punching it because I'm going to throw it in the forge to bend it. Everything's cooled off, everything's bent, and everything's ground the way we want it. So we're going to start putting these things together now. It should be straightforward. We're just going to eyeball this and tack weld it. Got to get this lined up under here. Those are lined up good, so we're going to lay it in nice and heavy. Not the be most beautiful world, is it? Yeah, I got a little nasty. For the 5 8 one, I have rotated everything 90 degrees.
let's see how they fit on here. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's try them out. types of spring fullers work great now this one bent almost immediately right there just a little bit but everything stayed straight that sounds weird it bent but it stayed straight the the fullering dies here stayed aligned so that's all that's important so we got a nice even fuller on there uh this bad boy right here it, it put a fuller on both sides of this stock so, you know, if you ever need to put a fuller in a knife or a decorative piece, you know, probably a knife, what your grandpa would call a blood groove. Anyway, if you want to put one of those onto a blade or a decorative piece, this gives you the ability to do that. I doubt I'll ever use it much, but never hurts to have one hanging on the tool rack. So those are our spring fullers for our little anvils. And I believe spring forging tools like this didn't really come into existence until power hammers uh, got pretty prevalent because you can use them under power hammers, not the ones we made with the, the hardy shaft sticking off, but you can, you know, you can imagine how handy that would be. And it gives, it is a, a forging multiplier. It gives you the one person the ability to do larger amounts of work and more varied types of work. So spring fullers are definitely something that you should look at what do you think what diameter of spring fullers do you think would be handy what would you like to use in your shop what do you use in your shop comment down below let me know all right y'all behave yourselves by the way because somebody's going to bring it up you can make a spring fuller out of one piece of material that's bent and goes in the hardy lays on the ammo and comes back and it's its own spring and it comes around and you don't have to do any welding you can forge it all but i'm not gonna talk about those because i've made them before i've used them before and they suck so don't fool with those do something else